Hello everyone. In this example, we're told a child pulls a sled along the ground by exerting a constant force of 30 pounds that makes an angle of 35 degrees with the ground. How much work does the child do if they pull the sled 100 feet? And so we might need a little bit more uh, physics background before we can start working on this example. And the first thing we have to talk about is how do you calculate work from the, uh, the physics perspective? So in physics, work is defined as the product of a force with a distance, but there's a requirement that the, uh, the force is in the same direction as that distance or displacement. And usually that force is thinking as contributing to causing that distance to be traveled or some object to be displaced. And so that's exactly what we have here. We have a sled on the ground. So let's assume the ground is nice and horizontal. Then we also had a force acting on the sled and that was the child pulling the sled at this angle of 35 degrees measured from the ground or the horizontal axis. And so we can interpret our force as a vector, right? The magnitude of our vector is 30 pounds. That's how much push or pull is being uh, exerted by the child. And the direction or angle of our force is 35 degrees with respect to the horizontal. And so now maybe the, the sled starts at point A and ends at point B. Then we can think of the distance between our points A and B as a vector, the vector going from A to B, or maybe to simplify it, we can just write that as the vector D. Think of that as our distance or our displacement vector. So in physics, we define work as the product of force and distance, but work is only equal to the product of force and distance when our force is in the exact same or parallel direction to that distance traveled or that displacement that occurs. All right, so if we're in the situation like we are here where our force vector is not described as being in the same direction as the displacement or the, uh, the motion, then what we have to do is figure out how much of that force vector is in the uh, direction parallel to our motion. So we can always break some vector into a horizontal and vertical component or in general into a component parallel to some other vector and perpendicular to that same vector. And that's what we're gonna be doing here. So we're gonna be thinking about our vector F as really being the sum of these two smaller vectors, the smaller vectors being some horizontal component and the other piece being some vertical component. But in general, uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily horizontal or in the direction of I or X. It could be horizontal with respect to some other vector D, like our displacement vector describing the motion that is uh, happening. And one of the nice things about breaking our vectors down into these simpler pieces that are kind of orthogonal or at 90 degree angles is that we can then set up and use right triangle trigonometry to help us in our calculations. And so that's what we're now ready to do. We want to kind of describe how much of our force is actually in this direction of the displacement or the direction in which the uh, child is pulling the sled. It's not gonna be all 30 pounds of that force. Some of that 30 pounds is in the upward direction. We only need the amount of that force that is in the horizontal direction or the direction of motion. And so while using some right triangle trigonometry here, we can see that if we take cosine of our 35 degree angle, we can express that as the ratio of the adjacent side length in our picture, which is gonna be the magnitude of that horizontal force vector that we need, that component of our force in the horizontal direction. And then we also wanna work with the magnitude of our force vector F or the hypotenuse of our right triangle, because that is uh, the force that we were given or was described to us. We wanna to try to avoid using that vertical component of the force because we weren't given any information about it and it's not gonna be needed for the calculation we are trying to compute. So from our right triangle, we know cosine of 35 degrees is the adjacent side length divided by the hypotenuse, but that's our horizontal component of our force vector or the magnitude of the horizontal component of our force vector divided by the overall magnitude of our force vector F. And so well, we can now solve for our horizontal force magnitude just by multiplying both sides by the magnitude of F. And what we see is the amount of force in this horizontal direction or in the same direction as our displacement vector D is equal to the magnitude of our force vector F multiplied by cosine of theta, where theta is that angle between our force vector and our displacement vector. And so now we are ready to go back to our work calculation because in order for us to use work is equal to force times distance, we have to have the force and the distance or displacement 
being in the same or parallel directions. That's what this work was doing, was finding that component of our force that is in the same direction as our displacement. So the force part of our calculation is the magnitude of F times cosine of theta. And then the distance we travel, we know is 100 feet. But if we we're trying to think of that in terms of our picture, that would be the distance would be the magnitude of this vector from A to B or the magnitude of our vector D. So we actually know these quantities, right? Like I stopped writing our angle as 35 and switched out for a general angle theta. And I didn't write our distance as being uh, 100 feet and our force as being 30 pounds because I wanted us to kind of recognize this formula that we get for uh, work. So if we kind of reorder these factors a little bit, put the magnitudes out front and together and cosine of the angle between those two vectors at the end, we see that we can calculate work when the vectors describing our work are not in the same direction by computing the magnitude of that force vector multiplied by the magnitude of that displacement vector multiplied by cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between them. What we need to recognize is that right-hand side over here is our trigonometric version of the dot product. So work is equal to the magnitude of F times the magnitude of D times cosine of theta. We can also write that as the dot product of our force vector with our displacement vector. And that'll make it a lot easier to compute if we are given that component uh, information. Unfortunately, that's not what we were given in this example. So we're gonna have to compute the work using this magnitude definition instead. But these formulas will be really important and great to remember for these work problems that we're gonna run into throughout uh, mathematics and science. All right, so now stepping away from that general conversation for computing work, let's go back to our specific example. So let's see, we have everything we need now. We know the magnitude of our force is 30 pounds, right? The child is pulling the sled with a force of 30 pounds. We have to multiply that by, by the magnitude of our distance vector, which is how far our object has been displaced. And that was 100 feet. And that also gets multiplied by cosine of the angle between our two vectors or the angle between the force as it was described and the direction of travel. And that angle was 35 degrees. And so if we compute this, we should get a value of about 2,457 and our units here are going to be foot pounds. So when we're using the US uh, measurement system, force is measured in pounds, distance in feet, and the product for work is force times distance. That gives us feet times pounds or foot pounds. In the metric system, your force is gonna be measured in Newtons and your distance will be measured in meters. So your work unit will be Newton meters, which are also referred to as joules.